Friday practice at Zandvoort is over and the fastest driver of the day was almost Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin, but he was just pipped by Lando Norris in the McLaren and it was a day filled with incidents and red flags. But what did we learn? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the data and doing a data analysis from Friday practice. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the top teams later on, so please do stick around for that. Yep, Friday is over at Zanvoort, and as I mentioned, it was a day filled with incidents as we saw multiple red flags. In free practice one, Kimi Antonelli beached the Mercedes, bringing his first session to a very early end. Then in FP2, Lance Stroll crashed heavily, followed by Alex Albon, meaning that we saw three red flags in total, which really messed up the running. We also saw multiple spins. Lewis Hamilton, for example, spun in both practice sessions, and Max Verstappen beached his Red Bull right at the end of FP1. As ever though, how did the lap times compare from FP1 to FP2? Well, let's look at the fastest lap from both sessions. Both sessions were topped by Lando Norris in the McLaren, and when you look at these two times, they're actually very similar, indicating that in FP1, Lando Norris was running very aggressively, which could explain why McLaren was so far ahead of the rest of the competition in the first session. Generally, between the two sessions, there is massive improvements, but with worries about rain in FP2, McLaren opted to push in the first session, but you can still see where Norris was visibly quicker in the second practice session. The run through turns 2 and 3 in FP2, for example, Norris was clearly faster, showing that the grip had improved between the sessions, as he can carry more speed. The next area where Norris in FP2 clearly gains time is at the turn 9 braking zone. Here, Norris gets a significantly better run in FP2 and carries about 11 kilometers per hour more speed as the circuit has cleaned up and it has also gripped up, meaning that Norris in FP2 can attack the track much more aggressively and carry more speed. Overall, the lap time only improved by just over three tenths of a second, which like I said, is a lot less than what we normally see. So we've seen how the times barely changed between the two sessions, but now let's take a look at the top speed that the teams were able to reach, and what can we see here? Well, what we can see is that one team is clearly slower than the rest in a straight line, and that is McLaren, as they reach just 322 kilometers per hour, which is only just over 200 miles per hour. The majority of teams are around four or five kilometers per hour faster in a straight line, indicating that McLaren are running with more downforce than the competition, and they can get away with that and still be faster due to their car just in general being so much better. McLaren are looking very strong in the dry, and if it rains with this setup, then they're in a great place as well. Red Bull, on the other hand, were the fastest car in a straight line, and they were the only team to break the 330 km per hour mark as they hit 331 km per hour, indicating that Red Bull were running with less downforce to try and compete with their competition. And that is fine, unless it ends up raining, because if it rains and they're still running this lower downforce, then Red Bull could be in a serious amount of trouble. Now that we've seen the top speeds, let's talk about Aston Martin. And the reason I want to talk about Aston Martin is because they are absolutely flying so far. In my preview and predictions video, I said they would be the top midfield team, but I didn't think they would be quite this strong. In FP1, Lance Stroll was P3 and Alonso was P4. Then in FP2, Alonso was only just slower than Norris in the McLaren. Now, this could just be Aston Martin having things turned up and going for a bit of fun, but even so, this has been a very impressive Friday session from them. Apart from the small issue of Lance Stroll having a massive shunt at Turn 3, where it looks like he carried just too much speed. It will be interesting to see how they progress as the weekend continues. If it rains, I can also see Aston Martin being even stronger. I just want to say if you are enjoying the video so far, then would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get back to the video and let's talk about Red 
Bull. For Red Bull then, it has been an alright day, all things considered. Verstappen was P5 in FP2, which is not terrible, and he was ahead of the Ferraris. Also, teammate Yuki Tsunoda had a pretty positive day, as he was 7th fastest, which is definitely an improvement from him. But even with Verstappen in P5, he is still half a second away from Lando Norris in the McLaren, showing just how strong that McLaren is looking this weekend. Due to how messed up FP2 was, there's not really a great deal that we can read into the long runs. So let's compare the fastest lap of Norris to Max Verstappen, so we can see where half a second just bled away. And when you look at these two laps, you can clearly see how Verstappen was running with less downforce compared to Lando, due to how fast he was in a straight line. It was very impressive by Verstappen, but look at all of the braking zones. Verstappen with the reduced downforce, cannot carry anywhere near the same amount of speed as the McLaren, and that is because the Red Bull is moving around a lot more under braking, which is what you would expect with the downforce reduction. You can also see on the track dominance map how Verstappen has the edge down all of the straights, but through the corners it is all Lando Norris and McLaren. I anticipate that Red Bull will actually increase the downforce for qualifying and the race because it looks like McLaren has a clear edge in the dry and the wet right now. For Mercedes then, it was a fast day for George Russell, but it was not without mistakes for the Silver Arrows team. FP1 started off pretty dismally for teammate Kimi Antonelli, as his first session came to a very early end, sliding off the track and into the gravel. In FP2, Kimi did get out on track, but it was only 12th fastest, and 9 tenths of a second off of his teammate George Russell. Russell, on the other hand, had a great session and a great day really, finishing up in 4th place. Whilst long running in general was quite limited, Russell did manage to get a healthy stint on the hard tyres, which is what you can see when you compare all of the laps of George Russell to Lando Norris in the McLaren. For Mercedes, this will be very valuable data, as they try to figure out if they can potentially get away with a one-stop strategy and seeing if the hard tyres work. And well, it does look like that at least right now for George Russell, during the stint, he was very consistent on those hard tyres, and there was not a great deal of drop-off, which for Mercedes could be a very good sign for them in the Grand Prix. That is, of course, if the Grand Prix itself is dry. For Ferrari then, it was not really a great day for them. In my preview and predictions video, I said Ferrari will struggle here due to the bumps and general nature of the circuit but I was not expecting them to struggle this much. Hamilton had a couple of spins, and in general, his pace was just not good. But for Lewis Hamilton, it does have to be said, he was the faster Ferrari driver of the day, which is very impressive for him based on what we've seen so far this season. But where are Ferrari losing out against McLaren? Well, let's compare the lap time of Lando Norris to Lewis Hamilton. And when you look at these times here, it does not paint a pretty picture for Ferrari. Look at Lewis through turn 7, 8 and 9. He is carrying nowhere near the same amount of speed as Lando Norris and it costs him dearly as he loses over 4 tenths of a second in a very short space of time. At turn 9, Norris is carrying about 20 kilometers per hour more speed at the apex which just shows how badly balanced that Ferrari is currently because those corners require a great balance from the car, as they are turning and braking pretty heavily. Through turn 13 too, Norris carries 11 km per hour more speed. Ferrari has a ton of work to do to improve their pace and performance, because right now, they are behind Mercedes, Red Bull and McLaren. And finally for McLaren then, it was a very strong day, and well, it looks as though they are the class of the field once again. Although if practice is anything to go off, which I don't really think it is, but if it is, then their closest competition could be Aston Martin, which is kind of wild. Let's compare the fastest lap then of Lando Norris to Fernando Alonso, which I don't think I've said for a very, very long time. And when you take a look at these two laps, it really shows how Aston Martin have progressed. McLaren are clearly stronger on the brakes, but with Alonso getting a brilliant exit from turn three, because the Aston Martin, as we saw back in 2023, can get 
excellent traction off of corners, he actually overtakes the McLaren and becomes the faster car. In fact, Aston Martin were the faster car all the way until they reached the turn 11-12 chicane, which is where McLaren dominance in the braking zones becomes a little bit too much for those Aston Martin cars, and the McLaren cars once again become the faster cars. But for Fernando Alonso and Aston Martin, this is pretty incredible. For McLaren though, they are in a world of their own. Honestly, I expect them to absolutely dominate this weekend and they can do pretty much whatever they want with the setup. In the dry and the wet, they are in a class of one. So with that in mind then, what are my predictions for qualifying for the Dutch Grand Prix? Well, in P5, I'm going to go for Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. P4 will be Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin. P3 will be George Russell in the Mercedes. P2 will be Oscar Piastri in the McLaren. And I'm going to go for Lando Norris to take pole position in the McLaren. But those are my thoughts. The question is, what do you guys think? In the comment section down below, please do let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.